sixty percent of people had said that the situation had uh, gotten worse over the previous three years, but that compares um, not so much well, but it it it, it is. Uh, Again, it's not all that alarming when you consider that around 67% or 70% of people across North America and, and, and Europe said that the situation had gotten worse as well. Um, likewise, people believe that our institutions, our, our, our institutions across the public and private sector uh, are not to be trusted as much as they uh, were uh, three years ago. Political parties, again, rank at the top of the least trusted list. Uh, closely followed by uh, members of parliament. A score of five indicates, and we have a score of 4.4 .4 here, a score of five indicates a, an institution or a sector or a group of people that is believed to be badly affected by corruption. A score of one, or close to one, as in the case of the military or the army, is, uh, indicates a, a low level of, of corruption. What's most startling, and we pointed out today, was the place of religious bodies here. And it's only in Norway, I think, and uh, Israel that religious bodies are less trusted than they are in Ireland. I can't account for the reason in Norway. Um, again, political parties score 4.4 .4 out of 5. Um, only two countries in the world had a worse score, and those were Nigeria and Greece. Um, in the interest of balance, I think it's worth pointing out that around half of all the respondents said that political parties were the most corrupt institution or sector. It's not unique to Ireland. Um, but as I said, only one country, Norway, uh, the public in Norway perceived religious bodies to be the most corrupt uh, in the country. Um, in a sizable number of countries, the police are perceived to, to be corrupt, and that, that's the institution to which most members of the public appear to be paying bribes. I wouldn't necessarily describe them as bribes. Very often, they're extorted payments. People are stopped, they've seen them being stopped, and uh, having had uh, money extorted off them. Um, people were then asked how they would assess uh, the current government's performance in, in tackling corruption. In 2007, 8% uh, said that the government is very effective at tackling corruption. This year, 0.9% said that the government is very effective at tackling corruption, and some 80% of people believe that the government is ineffective. Again, that's one of the worst results anywhere in the world. Um, if there is any good news to be had, and there is a little bit of good news, I suppose, 80% of people said they would, uh, would be happy to join in the fight against corruption, which I suppose is good news for us. Uh, we just have to tap into a small percentage of those, uh, and I think we'll, we'll more than double our, our, our membership. Um, likewise, 9%, or 9, or, uh, 9 out of 10, 90% of people said they would blow the whistle uh, on corruption, which I think puts pay to the, the commonly held misapprehension that the culture in Ireland is not conducive to introducing whistleblower legislation. It's one less excuse for, for politicians to throw up. Um, move on. It, it, it's, it's also good timing for us as far as we're, we're about to launch a, a helpline for whistleblowers, a uh, free helpline sponsored, partly sponsored by the European Commission, uh, which will provide free legal advice uh, and support to, to whistleblowers, people accessing information. That should be launched, formally launched early next year. We're just trialling it at the moment. Um, I'll just make a few comments from where um, uh, Jim and Jane have to, to speak as well. Um, but I'll just make a few comments what I think that the results mean. Firstly, I don't believe that it means corruption has got any worse. Um, I believe that people are more aware of the level of corruption in society and the level of corruption in, in our political parties and in, in Parliament. And secondly, I think the trust or the decline in trust is actually a good thing. I think in the past we've just been too trusting. We've trusted our church leaders, we've trusted our politicians, we've trusted our bank managers, our senior bank executives to do the right thing by us. And I think we've begun to wake up and I think this, this uh, hard landing will have woken us up to some extent. 
Uh, and I also think that, that trust in itself is not a good thing. Um, and, and while uh, a lack of trust is, is not in itself a bad thing, it, it's important to bear in mind that it is essential to, to a functioning democracy, functioning economy and society. But given that it's, it's not the most important thing in itself, uh, and given also that it is, it's also important, I think what politicians, what our political leaders, leaders in the business community and the non-profit sector have to realise is that they have to earn that trust. Uh, I think if we're to focus on restoring trust in politics, we will actually undermine trust in politics. I think the emphasis should be on proving or on the need to prove and the need to earn respect uh, and trust uh, from the public and the need to, to put in place the kind of measures, take, make the, the necessary sacrifices to, to earn back that trust from, from, from the general public. It's also important to bear in mind as well that our politicians have never really been trusted. Uh, politicians around the world 2,000 years ago uh, were never trusted. I think it's the scale of, of distrust in, in society at the moment that needs to be addressed. But that's not going to be addressed by either just talking about restoring trust or uh, asking people to trust us. We have to prove ourselves. Um, I, won't, I won't dwell too long, but I just wanted to touch on, on one or two um, important steps that I think we need to, to take before I move on to, to, to the recommendations, uh, some, some, some concrete recommendations. Um, the, the current debate around the financial crisis has thrown up some interesting comments. Um, the business community has, has asked us or pleaded with us not to enter into a blame game. Um, Colin McCarthy, our old friend and former chair of TI Ireland, said that anger is not a policy to which Fintan O'Toole said, well, it's a very good starting point. I think the problem with blame and anger, however, is that it's outward looking. And I think we need to develop a sense of justified or righteous shame. I believe that we need to be ashamed of ourselves. I feel a level of shame going overseas explaining what's gone on here. Uh, I think we need to feel those who have supported the current government a sense of shame for having elected them in the first place and those who have elected them on the basis that they were going to reduce taxes or going to, to, to make us better off need to look at themselves and, and reassess their own value systems. Um, I think also that we need to, to look at the role of, of integrity in society rather than just transparency or accountability, and I, I can touch on accountability in a moment. But I think we need to look at how we face up to the demands of reality. We've seen a lot of denial over the past few months. The last couple of weeks we saw a government deny that it was talking to the IMF or the European Union. I think we need a good dose of reality and I think we need leaders who are prepared to act in accordance re with reality and in accordance with the values that we, we, we share. Um, I think the true test of, of, of reform and true test of progress will be the election result next March and I'd like to see people voting for, for those candidates that are committed, openly committed to, to a more open society and accountability uh, in government and in the business sector. Now there are a number of, of concrete uh, steps I, I, I think will make a difference and we can discuss these in more detail later. Um, but I believe first off that we do need to break the link between uh, the political party system and the business community and other vested interests whether they be, uh, whether they be in, in the trade unions or elsewhere. I believe we need a, a universal whistleblower charter that will uh, protect those in both the public and private sector from, from reprisal when speaking up. And as I mentioned, we, we need to see more powers for, for our law enforcement agencies, both the, the Guardian and the Standards of Public Office Commission. I'll skip on down and make the point, and I think Jane will be able to, to go into more detail on, on this point, that citizens need to be given a 
a, a greater say in how government is run. They need to have a, an active involvement in government. I believe that people are marginalised in terms of their participation in government. They're given a say once every four or five years. And our elected representatives take it upon themselves then, without much by way of consultation, to make major decisions on our behalf without referring back to us. I think our political system needs to, to be redesigned. I think it needs to reflect the values that we all hold and we have, we've, we've articulated quite consistently. And I think, again, we need politicians who are prepared to hold themselves to account and who outwardly show a sense of shame when they get things wrong as badly as they've got things wrong over the past year or so. I'll leave it at that and uh, allow Jane to share her thoughts. Thanks. Okay.